Hello, everyone in Artfully Connected with Cindy Harrison, and welcome to another episode of Meet the Artist. Today's guest artist is none other than Miss Roz Stalkup. Oh, well, thank you. Glad to be here. So I, I am so happy you're here. I'm so happy to get to uh, hear about your artful journey and how you came to be here today with me in the studio and socially distancing, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and everyone who is um, joining us today, thank you so much for joining us. And please feel free to let us know where you're joining us from, what state you're from. Um, if you have any questions for Ross, you can put them in the comment section and I will try to make sure that they get answered for you today live. If not, Ross can come back at any point. She can read the questions and answer them um, through text. So feel free to do that. I always encourage that because I run out of questions and I need help. So <laughs> luckily uh, some of your fans will be here and they will be asking you questions. So. <laughs> The first question of the of the hour is, where are you from? Okay, I live in Virginia Beach, Virginia, and I'm a native. I was born in Norfolk, which is a, right here at the same place. And my, my dad was in the military, so we traveled around a bit as kids, but grandparents lived here, and we always kind of came back here. So then I went to high school here, and met my husband, and and uh, I only went to college one year, but then we got married young, which was not so unusual in those days because we've been married now, what, oh, 61 years, something like that. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, I That's a know. long time to be with one it, person. <laughs> it is, it is. And some days I think not another minute, but <laughs> in general, we're just fine. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah. So you, so being the military, you've been quite a number of places, huh? We lived in Puerto Rico as kids, and that would have been, ooh, uh, not long after the war, would, like, would have been like 1947 and 8, something like that, or 6 and 7. And then we came back, and then, of course, in those days, my dad was gone a lot, and when, then later on, they were divorced. But then she married another Navy man, and we moved to Rhode Island for a while. And then we went to Morocco, went to French Morocco when I was a teenager, and actually got shipwrecked on the way. You got shipwrecked. <laughs> we did. We were on a, a Norwegian freighter and it uh, blew a boiler and caught on fire. And we ended up having to get down the side of the ship and rope on ladders and and get into lifeboats and were picked up by an Argentine liner and ended up in Lisbon, Portugal. Wow. So even, <laughs> even before the artful fun. journey began, <laughs> you had a lot of you had a lot of adventure. Well, they, but they haven't had a lot of adventure in the recent years, so that's okay. <laughs> but I have because this painting journey has taken you so many different places and I've met so many neat people that then play and gotten to go places I, I probably never would have been before. So it's been a wonderful, wonderful lot of years. Wow. I kind of am envious because I born and raised and stayed in one place for all my life. And then I moved well for the, my younger years. And then when I got married, I moved just a couple cities away and that's it. I've never, well, that's not so bad. <laughs> but no, I, I love, I love traveling. That's always been something I wanted to do one day. So I'm hoping to be able to get more of that in as soon as COVID's over. Well, and you need to do it while you can, because like I say, my husband's health now, it's not so good. It's very different. We, we won't be traveling. You know, he can't, he can't do it. So, and I can't really go off and leave him, but so much so. <laughs> so. And that's why you're here today. It is, it is. Yeah. <laughs> so the next question is, did you, well, did you come from an artful family, an artistic family? Uh, a little bit. My mother was talented. Uh, she was kind of a kook in some ways, but uh, she was talented and that was a, a good thing. And I had another an aunt on my dad's side um, that was very talented and taught painting and, and did a lot of things. And then I had a great aunt that did things. So yes, we did kind of, you know, it wasn't unusual in our family to have some, some people who were a little artsy, which is great. So know. what kind of art did they delve into? What was their... 
mama tried all kinds of things. You know, she'd get into pastels and she tried portraits and she did landscapes and, you know, watercolors. And, and uh, later she moved, they moved up to a small town in Virginia and she went to the community college and took some classes and stuff. So, so that was a good thing. And we did some together when she still lived here. So, so you were, you were obviously always exposed to, um, that since she did that and when you were home when you were a child so when did you when did she allow you to start joining in on the art when did you <laughs> when did you course, start it yourself right well reality kits in there and she went to work and didn't do much of anything for years but um i was one of those kids and i've told people for years that hate made horrible messes that i literally painted the radio with house paint one time. And uh, my sister put up with me, thank goodness. But I always enjoyed whether it was cutting pieces of paper or cut pieces of fabric or making a mess with something. I always did enjoy it. I you know, had my hands in it all along kind of thing. So, so when did you actually start painting and, and developing you know, that skill? I didn't do much painting it in, in, in school and like in high school or even in college. Um, but um, later on, I got into it. I went to work for a local chain of mom and I did some things, but then I went to, to work for a local chain of arts and crafts stores that of course are long gone now and got into teaching decorative painting because it was something I felt like I could teach. And then, thank goodness, I, I got met Sue Shiwi and got involved with uh, a national teaching staff with Sue in about 1984, I guess it was, 83 probably, and which led to all kinds of neat things and going to trade shows and meeting so many people. And, and uh, that was a wonderful experience. And then gradually, my daughter and I kind of had a little business where we uh, painted things to sell. It was before all the stuff started coming in from China. And we painted and sold wholesale because she had little children by then. And uh, so it was a way for her to stay home with her children. And we sold mostly wholesale to some big garden centers and gift shops and a few places. And so Sue saw some of the things we were doing and said, why don't you put those in a book? So that's what happened. And that was about 1993, I guess, the first book, which was Grant's Garden. And so it's been done very well for a lot of years. And I've been very happy about it. Of course, the book market is pretty well gone. So, you know, but thankfully, I'm still teaching and I've got pattern packets in there and enjoy myself. I thoroughly enjoy it. And I enjoy the students and the, the relationship you develop with them. Mm, so, so did you start in acrylics right away or did you? No, I started in oils. Started in oils. And so how, how long before you, I mean, so it's like you didn't start teaching right away. You were painting and taking some classes. Right. And then you felt like you could teach it or did somebody say to you, hey, I think you could teach this? <laughs> well, no, it kind of evolved. The fellow that I worked for uh, sent me and another girl to Priscilla Hauser because we thought we could, to her books were out and we thought, oh, this looks like, and the deal was if I went and he paid for it, then um, uh, I had to come home and teach. So I did, I came home and set up my class and I, taught started teaching and then I found there was another whole world out there not that there was anything wrong with that one but it was amazing all the things uh that you found and you found out there was a convention you could go to and a society you could join and and all of those neat things that went on and on and of course that was just a, it was an introduction to a great life you know I ended up quitting my job at home and going to work for sushi we and was busy right away. I mean, we were in different regions. It was a national teaching staff and we taught primarily oil landscapes in those days because that was a need that maybe some of these uh, shops needed. They weren't decorative painting shops particularly, but we had a lot of other shops in those days um, that were all kinds of different things. So the, the oil landscapes was a, wonder, was a wonderful education because we went out to Sue's twice a year and um, painted with people that had written books, new books coming out. And we would teach their projects basically to hopefully the idea was to sell books, you know, 
and it did. It was a promotional thing through Grumbacher originally. And so they had a deal. So, so, so you were painting, you were teaching other people's designs, but you also were developing your own designs. And is, right. that, is that about the same time you became, you know, you started teaching, you know, at conventions and stuff like that? Or how did I really happen? didn't do too much teaching at conventions. I'd go work at the show for Sue. <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but is that in the booth? Right. right. Did you develop your own design like right away or was that something that came? No, it just happened over the period of time okay. with the so, things we were doing to sell really, you know, kind of. a. So would you say that your biggest influence was Susie, uh, Susan Sheely? Oh, I would. Yes, yes, yes. And we're still good friends. Awesome. That's yes, awesome. yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, so what is your favorite subject map? Oh, that's kind of hard because I enjoy painting fruit. I enjoy painting flowers. I enjoy landscapes. You know, I like doing most all of it. I think I probably have done a lot with flowers over the years because of the gardening stuff to begin with, but I really enjoy doing it all. I paint portraits for myself in oil, but I don't teach portraits. You know, I just, I just, uh, that's just something I do. I painted my grandchildren and my sister's grandchildren and... <laughs> So how, how, other than your, you, obviously you work on photographs for them, but uh -huh. how do you come up with your designs for the flowers and the fruits? Do you set up a, a still life and take a picture? Is it just something that comes out of your head? Well, you, you see things in a garden, you take pictures everywhere you go or used to, but don't go so much anymore. Uh, but we all get ideas from everything you see and do really. Um, I do sometimes set up a still life if it has an object, like if it has a, a vase or something. A lot of times I'll use something I have and I'll take pictures of that particular thing so that you can um, have a visual to, you know, kind of start with. And then you can put like arranging flowers in, a, in, in, a, in your house or from your garden. It's you, you, do, you know, you start out by tap, putting some greenery in there and then you put some flowers in and if one looks awful, you just paint that one out or wipe it out and put another one in, you know. I, I noticed in a lot of your um, designs that ribbon, like, uh -huh. is, is that like, is that like a favorite element, element that you it like? It is, yeah. I love to put a ribbon in there, right. <laughs> And you always tuck it in the design. It's not stuck on as an afterthought. Right, right. I just, I just noticed that having painted a few of them myself and, and saying it's, it's always like that, I don't know, it's a soft, warm, cozy, you know, the ribbon just nicely tucked into that design. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It ties things together nicely. Yeah, yeah. So. What, what would you say, because you started in oils and you still are painting in oils when you do your portraits, right? So right. But is that your favorite medium? What, what, what would you say is your favorite medium? Oh, I think I like the acrylic best. And I like, I'd rather teach in acrylic. Now, Sue had a program with uh, watercolor one time and we taught her her um, certification program in watercolor. So I did a lot in watercolor and I like watercolor too. But um, I prefer the fact in acrylic, how easy it is, particularly using, I use deco art acrylic. And because your colors are right there, even though I almost never use just one color, um, you can always touch up your background. You've always got the colors you use, they're right there. And I, and I love this inexpensive acrylic paint. I'll be very happy when they get more of it back in, my, on the, in the stores because that's a little bit of a problem these days. But we, it never hurts anybody to learn how to mix a little bit. So <laughs> it'd be good for everybody. Exactly, exactly. Uh -huh. What would, I mean, do you have a favorite surface? Is there a surface that you prefer to paint on over the other surfaces? No, not really. I, it's fun to do them all. I like doing fabric sometimes. I like painting on wood or even MDF. I like canvases. I use a lot of canvases anymore because some of the wood surfaces are hard to come by. And usually like in the classes I do here at Virginia Beach, everybody brings their own surfaces. Oh. Cool. And that's good because they give each other ideas and they know approximately what we're going to do and they know about the size we need. Um, but it's very easy to adapt. 
to mm -hmm. change it to fit their surface. You know, uh, I do a lot of stuff freehanded. Mm -hmm. A lot of the flowers are freehanded, you know, rather than always patterned so tight, you know. Yeah, and, and I talking about those patterns. <laughs> I remember when I first, and I told you this story before, but when I first picked up a Grand's Garden book and I had, I think I had every one of them and, uh, and I, and I look at it and I'm like, what is this? This is not a line drawing <laughs> because I was so attuned to Maxine Thomas was right. a big influence on my life. Uh, Betty Caithness, then uh, Gail Anderson, and they're, and they're all distinctive every line met with the other line, you know, oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and yours had, you know, kind of, there's some lines, they don't all connect, but you know, yeah. here, here's, here it is. And I'm like, oh, so I had to learn how to get loose real fast. Yeah, yeah. Well, this man <laughs> is a visual guide on a lot of, now, if you've got a building or a rocking chair or something, then we're going to pattern that. We're going to make that because it's important to have that structure correct, but it doesn't matter with a lot of it. Yeah, I think the one the one with the Adirondack chair. Uh-huh. That was structured. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah. One. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There are some of those. Yeah. But um it, it always came out beautiful. So thank you. Well, so that's good. That's thank good. you so much for sharing that talent with us. Um, do you have a favorite technique? Oh, I can't think so. I think I probably do pretty start out the same way with most everything that you, you, you know, you put in the first layer of color and then you start on top of it, whether you're flicking it or shoveling it or whatever, but you know, you're, you're, there's not anything that's, I think, a favorite technique. I do work with a fair amount of paint though, in general, rather than um, real, real tight. And I use a wet palette because I like uh, using deli wrap. I like the fact that my paint stays on my palette and doesn't dry all up. I don't have to dig under it, you know, to get to it. <laughs> so there you go. Do you use a stay wet palette? As I do, but I, like I say, I use a piece of synthetic chamois and a, a piece of deli wrap, which is okay. The, okay. You know, Sorry. stuff on top. Yeah. I, I was reading the accolades that you're getting. So many people love, um, love you and love your works. And they, if they've met you, they talk about that. And if they haven't, they talk about, they're so thankful for this interview that they can meet. Oh, well, good. Yeah. Um, one said uh, from Lynn, she says, hello, Ross. The very first class I ever took was with you. I knew absolutely nothing about painting and you were so kind. Came home that day with a painting I still display and was hooked. Have most of your books. So. Oh, that's nice. That's yeah. There was one here, she, I think it, it's when I first seen you at one of the 83 or 84 conventions with Sue and bought Grand's Garden book. Uh-huh. There was one I wanted to read that said, um, so glad to meet you through this interview. You were such a great influence on my mom's art development. She taught, uh, she took classes from you at Taylor Hobby in Clark, uh -huh. yeah. Pennsylvania. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, uh, she goes, how she loved your classes. So there's a legacy there that you have left behind. And yeah. uh, this is so wonderful. So thank you all for being here. Thank you for uh, sharing your memories or sharing, you know, how you met Ross with us. And if you have any questions for her, please post them and, and we will ask them for you. <clears throat> so, um, the next question I have is, do you have a favorite brush? Uh, probably a half inch angle shader and a foliage brush are the favorites that uh, I think that that half inch foliage brush fits my hand nice. And I use um, what used to be Sue's foliage brush, but now of course the things are kind of gone and I use one from Sharp that's a, a, a three quarter inch foliage brush. And that's kind of like to people who just getting started on some of the things I say, well, now there are maybe two things you really need. You may have everything else, but you need that foliage brush and you need a half inch angle shader if you don't have one, you know? Okay, cool. Um, we do have a question from the audience. Um, when you paint acrylics on canvas. Do you uh -huh. put gesso on it first? You always, uh, you always kept a smile on your face and was 
patient with us. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't put gesso on it first. It's already gessoed. See? Unless you have one that's really, really rough and you think you'd like it a little smoother, then you could always add another coat of gesso. And you could even sand it lightly if you felt like you wanted something a little smoother. Normally, I just paint on it, whatever it is. I just want to paint. I don't want to spend a whole lot of time <laughs> getting ready. <laughs> there you go. Um, Sharon says the BADFA, British Association right. of Decorative and Folk Art people in the UK and beyond would love to paint with you again. You can now because yes, she's I know on and our webinars. Them, and so and we can a, a little thing about it. And I said, oh, yeah, we're going to do a Zoom class because she was wanting to know what's like going to do some Zoom classes. And yeah. uh, so I thought, oh, that's exciting because you know, there's no way we're going to be traveling these days. And I'm, and at this point, I'm not going, I love going to England, had a great time with those gals, but you know, that, that those days are kind of over, you know, so. Right. So we can set up a um, class that is time, you know, time yes. for them as well. I've yeah. done with Lynn Andrews and her audience over in the, in Europe. And uh, so that we can have them have their own class so to speak oh neat, neat. you know so that great they, they can all get together so awesome not have to get up in the middle of the night or whatever huh <laughs> yeah yeah well that was crazy uh, a lovely lovely lady from australia got up at 3 a.m to paint with oh. us and uh at the same time somebody from italy was painting with us so that <laughs> you know yeah it was nuts Tricky, but right, right. <laughs> they did it, and and it's all made possible through the internet, through Zoom and yeah, Artful Webinar. Great. So yeah, yeah. This was great. Okay, so Priscilla Zachary says, "You introduced me to the foliage brush, and I am so grateful. I still have my two first foliage brushes. I can use them in acrylics and watercolors." Sure, sure. Yeah, and they hold up great. So it's not something you're going to have to replace real often. Yeah, I still have my Susan Shiwi brush. <laughs> yeah, brush. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Sharon's like, fabulous news about teaching European groups. You got good, it. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, that was Sharon that had sent me the email about it and I had answered her back. So I'm really glad. So another one is asking if the Zoom classes will be recorded. So do you allow recordings? I, I they can record them I don't I, I don't know I, I, I'm not going to try to record them yeah typically what what uh what I do is I will ask the teachers if they allow recordings if they say sure yes, I will record it and then I will put it on um a storage space on the in the internet that they will have access to for 30 days ah okay then, no that's great so, but yeah. I don't want you to lose power over your um intellectual property so well, that, I think in this day and time with the internet and everything, I don't know how you'd ever control it anyway. So sure, have at it, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. I mean, if you want them to download it, I can allow that too. <laughs> That's fine. That's um, fine. Foliage brush. Sandra said, could you please show us your foliage brush? Do you have sure. it in front of you? Well, I got one right here. Ta -da! This one's been used quite a bit, so it's kind of green. They're originally clean and white, and this is a three-quarter. Let me get it where you can see it. Yeah, right there. Yeah, right. It's a bristle brush that's cut on an angle, and it makes wonderful foliage because you put it in the water first, and if you put it where you can see it again. Um, uh, so, and then I have you fluff it out. You kind of, kind of beat it up. Now the piece we're gonna do in March doesn't have any foliage brush in it because it hasn't got any foliage, but it is one I use a lot, you know. And the little freebie one we're gonna do is, the, you know, this little one with the lighthouse. And I used the foliage brush back here on that little small area back behind the lighthouse. And I also a lot of times spatter with it because it's great to spatter, you know, you just go like this and go, you know. <laughs> oh, there you go. So yeah, right, right. Multi, multi uh, faceted brush there that you can yes, use. Yes, it is. And I also paint grass with it in a meadow and stuff. I, I use it a lot. You know, like I say, it's just kind of there. And it does come in other sizes, but the three quarters, the one I use the most, but it does come in smaller ones and bigger ones, really. Yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So what would, what would be, let's see, what is your best tip? 
what what could be your best tip that you you give out to people mm. mainly to get in there and do it have fun with it and remember yours doesn't have to look like somebody else's you want it to look like yours you know so it's not I, i'm i'm a lot looser than some of the gals nothing wrong with being tighter but um and so i encourage you to you know to do your own thing a bit don't don't get too hung up don't be afraid to try experiment with colors and with different things you want to put in it because it's your painting you know, have fun. Yes, definitely. So what um, people are asking about the March class. So you want to show us um, what you'll be teaching for upper webinars in March? Right, right, yeah. Okay, uh, let's see, what's the this is the pattern packet. I figured maybe you could see that a little better. So I've got it on a chalkboard. It's just a, um, um, a chalkboard surface, but you could paint on anything. And if you didn't want the back black ground, that doesn't matter either. You could put whatever you want. Um, it's not tiny. I've got the piece here because I did repaint it, but you can see it's pretty good size. I like to paint flowers and fruit about actual size rather than trying to paint really tiny, right? Yeah. Um, I did use DecoArts chalkboard paint. And if you were looking for the surface and particularly wanted it, uh, Painter's Paradise has it. I, she told me she would, um, would, would have them. I, if you were gonna order from her though, I would order in a hurry because um, she, she's not act always real together. <laughs> she's got a lot going on in her life too, so. <laughs> so they can, but go ahead. It could be just a flat board if you wanted that you could chalkboard, you know, or it could be a canvas, whatever you want, you know. So then um, the line drawing is that actual size. The Yes, it is. Uh -huh. And uh, this is the, you know, the size of the pattern that's in the packet. It's two pieces. You have to tape it together and you have to put very little on there in which we said ahead of time. But uh, and I had a picture that I made of what I can find the right page. Yeah. So actually, while well, all you need to pattern on is just the shapes of the sunflowers. And I did put the apples on and the leaves only because if you're going to put a little bit on, it helps to have it for placement. But that's all I put on there. So you don't really need to put all those petals or anything, you know. So the, the date of the class is March 6th, and it's from noon to 5 p.m. Eastern. And you can sign up for it at artfulwebinars.com and there are seats available and it's open to for registrations to take registrations. Um, what and, and then you have that piece that you were showing the lighthouse. Yeah. Yeah. And that's going to be in April. Right. And it's a free it's a free um, project for all of you here on artfully connected right right. Right, right. And this is actually was in one of the earlier books. It was in um, Grant's Travels and there were three of them. So I do have a pattern packet available that you can order and it has all three in there because I thought, you know, if you if they make a nice little grouping and they're all the same colors, you know, so they tie together nicely. And uh, that's Seaside Miniatures and that is on my website. Cool. And you can get, it's an e-packet or I can mail you one either way, but the e-packets are sure easy to work with. I mean, if you've got a printer, you know. Yeah, yeah. So then you can purchase the pattern and paint along with her and she'll be doing it live in April and I'll put that um, event up soon. Yeah. I wanted to get through February, you know, February. Oh, you, well, you've got this <laughs> wonderful convention coming up. I hope a lot of people are signing up for that. That sounds like great fun. It is great fun and, and hope that you'll be in on it next year when I do it again. I would love to. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Sounds Sandy, like fun. Sandy, hi, Sandy Greco, Sandy's here. And she's asking where she could find the foliage brushes now. Where can Sharp. You, sharp. Sharp, uh-huh, yeah. And uh, artbrush dot, artbrush.com, I believe. Uh, yeah, get I know, but you can order right online. Yeah, I was looking yeah, to see if I um, had one to tell yeah. you the number. Mm, I do, but I don't know where it is. I've got so many brushes here in like us all we all have. They're all over the place. Um, um but two three seven. Oh, okay. Series two three seven, I believe. Yeah. 
it, it's, it's uh, yeah it's just a, called a foliage brush and it's um uh i think if you weren't too sure about the number i'm sure they could tell you you know what it would be yeah i may have it listed yeah i just looked it up on on uh on the internet yeah uh one thing about the little miniatures you know since that wasn't a book this is a reprint from the book and and i do tell you that in the thing um and some of the colors have changed a little bit since then but no big deal we'll talk about that ahead of time but it, you know it, right now it's a little tricky to find the colors you need anyway so we'll kind of talk about hey have, we can easily mix that with a little of this and that we can do that <laughs> what's the size of the canvas that the lighthouse is on it's small uh, six by six okay six yeah. by six yeah and like i say i've got i've got uh the one other one that I can show the other one I think I must have sold I don't can't hang on to things because I live in a small house that I've lived in for 50 some years and there's no way I can keep all this stuff so <laughs> it goes <laughs> and so. the, I oh I totally understand I totally understand um there's another question here about will you be teaching via zoom on a regular basis I would like to depending on how it goes and I certainly would be interested in the thing, like types of things people would like to do too. Yeah, so give her suggestions, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Are, uh, do, do you, okay, are all the brushes you use sharp? Yes. There you I just find that's easier to kind of stay within one thing and they've been a nice company to work with. And I'm happy with the quality of the brushes that I'm using from them. And I posted, so you can keep the questions coming. Thank you for being here and watching uh, and learning about Ross's artful journey with us. And so, yeah, you can keep them coming if you want uh, those questions. And so the um, another question I had was, how can people find you? So that's your website. Is there any right, way? Right. Do you have an email right. or? Um, it has my email listed on the website and a phone number. I'd be glad to talk to you if you've got a problem somewhere along the line. Um, these days I'm home, right? <laughs> We're all home. <laughs> um, but I'm glad to help in any way I can if you got stuck on something or you can't find something. If I can find it for you, I'll be glad to give you a clue there, you know. So are, are your books still out? Do you still have a, you know, like where can they, can they still buy your books as well? Oh I'm yeah, saying. they can, but a lot of them are out of print. Um, but of the ones that I have, they are on my website. You can look through the pages on the website um, and the pattern packets that I have are listed there too. So, and you can buy directly from me if you want. Uh, I think you can probably still get, I know you can get some of the books still through Sushiwi, which is paintingbooks.com. So depending on where you are, you know, uh, and we try to ship them to you as reasonable as possible. You know how that is. Um, the pattern packets, of course, we have e-packets. I, I, I do it myself. I just email them to you it's, as a PDF. It's not nothing complicated, you know, but uh, we cool. try to, I try to take care of you. <laughs> yeah, well, that's great that they're still available because there's so much wealth of knowledge in them that, yeah. yeah. Everybody. Yeah, and the workbook is still around, and I think that's something everybody, you know, if you haven't got a workbook, that's one you want, and that is still available. Um, but I, you know, as anything's gone these days, it's gone. You know, they won't be back. But the workbook is a, as a. Hopefully, you'll find it's just a great. You know, it's got flowers, fruit, landscapes, um, and all of the directions for it. If you got the page like this, the directions for those things are right here. And of course, it's meant to be just a worksheet. And I suggest people lay a piece of transparency film right on top of that worksheet. Actually, practice the worksheet. Oh, you know, that's because that's, it's just good practice for you. Yeah, that's good. A good tip. Um, yeah, I love your worksheets. I love the step by steps that you show yeah. us, and and uh, the, very valuable. Thank you so much for that because that really helps. Uh, yeah. Painter understand where they're supposed to be going and what they're right. You know, because sometimes the painters they get to the ugly stage and they think they did it wrong because oh it, yeah, it doesn't look right. 
No. But if you show us yours and yours is the same, the same way. And if it's not finished yet, you know, you got to get beyond that first step. But yeah, yeah. So. so Priscilla says that I still have the workbook and several other garden books. Me too. I love them. Yeah. Love Good. Them. Thank you. Uh, yeah. Ross's workbook is like the Bible in the art world. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know about that, but I, I do think it's a, a handy book. I think, uh, you know, I have people tell me all the time that they, they still go back, even if they're doing somebody else's design, which is fine. But sometimes you're thinking, now, how in the heck did we get there? You know, and you could incorporate a little of this and a little of that makes it your own style. Right. Karen is writing, what is the size needed for the apples if we were to put it on a canvas? How? Um, as far as brushes is that what she wants no the canvas size like that oh canvas size i would say apple and some yeah uh, probably a 12 by 16 would work yeah that would work 12 by 16 or 12 12 by 16 mm -hmm. 12 by 16 that's, yeah would probably work that fine. An unusual size canvas that's not your standard no, that's that's standard is this standard? Okay. Yeah, it's standard. Uh -huh. You, you might be able to put it on 11 14. by 14. Yeah, you might I usually work 11 by 14 or 16 by 20. So 12 by 16 to me. Is yeah, 11 by 14, it would pretty fill it well, fill it up, but you could do that. Cool. I've got a ruler here. Yeah, and the, the width of this board is like 12 inches and it doesn't fill the whole space because if it's a chalkboard, you might want to write on, you know, which is why, and I think the board that DecoArt has is, act, I mean, not Deco, that uh, Painter's Paradise has is actually a little longer than this one. Let's see if I can get it where you can see. It's actually a little longer, which is fine because if you were really going to write on it, and you can really use this surface for a chalkboard, you know. I hate to do that though. <laughs> <laughs> I've done a bunch of them, not this one, but where I turn it this way so that you're not with, you know, just a square board, because then you can put it between your cabinets and your um, counter. It fits nicely. And, you know, I don't have any wall space in my kitchen. I filled it all up with cabinets. You know, but we live in a little house. I've, we've lived here, like I say, years and years, and we're staying. <laughs> we're not going anywhere. We're not moving. No, um, not moving. Mm -mm. Kelly's asking, will you be doing any more books? Or maybe workbook number two? No, no. The book market is, there's no place to sell them anymore. You know, we couldn't deal originally years ago with the big chains wanted a whole lot more than we could, we could do. And um, then, you know, that was the only place, bless us, the, the, so many of the small shops are gone, you know, so there, unfortunately, we won't be producing any more books. I wish we were, but the way it is. So someone uh, has suggested that they would like to paint cows. <laughs> I haven't done any cows. I'd like to paint cows too. That could be fun. <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? I, it could be. I, I think they're really good looking. I think pigs are really cute too. <laughs> oh, pigs are cute. I have to say uh -huh. uh, pigs are very cute. So we can yeah. maybe look forward to a design with a cow in the future. Well, we might. We'll just have to see. I enjoyed watching the other day the the uh, um, the one with the the sheep that um, Lydia what, Lydia did. Yes, and it was really neat. And of course, her colors were wonderful. It was. So I'm going to watch something else coming up. I thought, oh gosh, that's that's just a neat little thing to be able to see what somebody's doing, particularly some of the things that we haven't worked in or you're not familiar with. It's a great way to to look in on them and see if you're in. I think I watched the one which she's going to do with the the um, uh, the colored pencils with the kitten. Oh yeah, yeah. She's got a beautiful Flory, Flory the kitten, and it's. Um, in pinks, so I love pink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's really kittens cute. in pinks. She got me one over all. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. So, last but not least, and I know we're early tonight, uh, this afternoon, but um, the last question I have is: What is there a medium or a subject matter or a technique that you haven't tried yet that you would like to try someday? Mm. Mm. I really don't know. You know, I, you kind of get in a rut or you get what you do most of the time and you have a tendency to stay there. I'm always willing to try things. And 
I might want to do more colored pencils because you can go back and use colored pencils on anybody's design. It doesn't have to be. Um, as I know, I went back and did a portrait in colored pencil, but I had one that I had just done in oils of my granddaughter. So I already had the pattern done and everything. <clears throat> and I thought that was fun to do, you know. They are, they're using colored pencil on top of acrylics now. Uh-huh. It's amazing what you can do with it. And I think I must have, like many of us, I probably have at least four sets of <laughs> colored, pencil. colored pencils. <laughs> I do. <laughs> you go somewhere in an art supply store and they have a, this beautiful set on sale and you think, oh, that's got to go home with me. <laughs> so now we're going to have to be raw style cup in colored pencil. <laughs> oh, I don't know whether it will or not, but, but I, I might. You can't tell. <laughs> um, you have a request here wondering if you have any landscape paintings that you could show us. Uh, handy dandy. Handy dandy. Uh, let me see. I mean, let me see what I've got over here. I've got some old ones. Um, these are all florals. little ones here little ones are good yeah this was the these are on the uh, uh these are a pattern packet that's a little barn you know that size but of course you could always do it larger you know that type of thing um and some of the old ones do you know how you keep some things because you like them oops knock things down this one is much bigger, but this is the uh, one of the seascapes living in a beachy area. You know, my crowd around here all like doing beachy things. Mm. And so we incorporate beachy stuff fairly often. And uh, what do I do with the ones we're gonna do? And we were gonna have a class in February and- What was that project? That's what I was looking for. Oh, these were some of these. That we ended up postponing till April. Uh -huh. uh, and one of the things we were going to do, which I haven't put in the pattern packet yet, are these fish that I thought were kind of fun. There's a pair of them and they're, they're fish, fish decoys. So they have a little hook in the top and they're ones I own, you know. And we were going to do a little small one with... Um, roses and pearls. So those were some of the projects we're going that I haven't put in pattern package yet, but I'm going to, you know, they'll get, they'll get worked up. Well, if, yeah, I love them. And maybe we can uh, entice you to um, submit them to our full webinars. Sure, sure. <laughs> um, there's a question on a piece of molding, you know, a piece of wood left over from when I had a door replaced. <laughs> there you go. Is there a particular flaw are there any particular flowers that you haven't painted yet? That's a question from uh, mm -hmm. Sylvia. Um, I don't think there's, there's uh, I'm not interested in doing something that's too exotic that nobody knows what the flower is. I'd rather do common variety things that grow in your garden. Um, so, you know, you, you look at it and you think, gosh, I've done magnolias and, and I've done sunflowers and I've done, um, hydrangeas I love, geraniums I love, you know, so I, I haven't really come across one that I think, oh gosh, I got to paint that one, you know, sometimes a combination of them, how they're put together and all, you know. They're always beautiful. Yeah, um, yeah. Jane says, do you have the Fredericksburg Sunday house to show? Uh, do I have, I might have, let me see. <laughs> Y'all are making her get her exercise. Well, that's all right. <laughs> we don't have a Sunday house. Um, let's see. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. So once again, thank you all for the. No, I don't think I have one of those. Oh. I should have, but I don't think so. I, you know, I keep them for a while and then. I part with them. It's like, <laughs> but the Sunday house was fun. And that was, uh, 
a, a piece of, from Fredericksburg, Texas, they have these charming Sunday houses all over town. And they were the houses that the, the um, ranchers or the farmers, or they would have been ranchers out in that part of Texas, I'm sure, um, that would come into town to go to church on Sunday and go to the market and they would build these little houses. So they had a place to stay when they came in. And of course, over the time they have, have turned them into beds and breakfasts, use them as part of them, added on to them, shops, galleries, you know, all kinds of things. And they're all over town and it's charming little houses that are, um, a lot of them are out of natural stone and stuff. So we had fun painting a Sunday house, yeah. So is that, is, you know, how many people could they sleep in a Sunday house? Oh, well, they'd have had to add on to it. It would have been very small. Originally a house would have been, you know, they might have had a, a loft and, and bunks or something. It was, was not a big house, you know, at all. They were just little, little places, you know. And is that is those patterns on your website? Uh, the, the, um, I put it in one of the books, the Sunday house. Um, it was in one of the later books okay. because we, we painted it in Fredericksburg and um, then I've taught it a lot of other places too because it's just kind of a fun little project, yeah. Well, um, Kathy um, Barnett saying that she had painted one. So Kathy, if you could please post, and all of you, please post whatever yeah. you did of Ross's in the group. And we can, uh, I can even make a head post saying anyone who's painted a Ross Talcott painting, please post it below sure, and super. show us all that you've done. Cause I yeah. would love to see that. I, I've got a few myself. So I would love to see what you all have painted with her and, uh, and from her books and patterns. Yeah. So that's cool. I'm so excited. I'm really, you know, when you called me, I was, you saw flabbergasted. <laughs> Um, but I'm so excited that you have become a member of the Afro Webinars family, and I really look forward to doing more work with you and offering more classes to your fans and uh, and just yeah, seeing where this takes us because this is is just a beautiful beautiful day for me, and I hope that it well, is for you as well. Well, we all thank you for what you're doing too, because I think you're doing a great job putting this all together for all of us. There's a bunch of us. And I, I've been so impressed with uh, the, the meet the teachers thing that you had that one night that at that the, what the gals had to say and what they were doing. And you think, oh, my goodness, <laughs> this is wonderful. You know, it is because unfortunately, with not being able to travel much or uh, it's a way for people to still take some classes and stay involved. And uh, it's great for us as teachers because it keeps us going, too, you know, it, well, I, I, I love it per, for personal reasons, because I get to meet you all, which, you know, I haven't been able to do. I mean, right. Not everybody is able to go to a convention or oh, now we haven't got any. So, well, you know, even that's... but over the last 30 years, you know, right. it's been hard for a lot of people to ever be able to do that. So, no, yeah, I couldn't that, do it. Uh, that I'm, I'm closing the gap in the distance between us. So I think that it's a wonderful thing. And, and I thank all of the people who watch, who are members of this group, who come to Artful Webinars and, and uh, take classes from the teachers there because without them, all of this would not happen, you know? So thank you all for being here and, and doing that. I love, and, and it's so funny, cause I say, I always, I wanted to be the bridge between the teachers and the students and and connect those dots and then one of the teachers said to me not only that but we're also helping the paint company we're also helping oh, yeah. yeah the services you know like painters paradise and uh the wood wood cutters and stuff out there so i hadn't really thought that far but yeah and and if i can and that's my little my little part in the world then i am so honored to be able to do that for everyone so is there any last questions you have for Ross? If there are, go ahead and post them and I will um, ask her. If not, she can come back hopefully and she will see all the beautiful words that you've said about her and uh, your memories of having had classes with her mm -hmm. over there. And there's a lot of them. I can't read them all, <laughs> but is there any last words, Ross, that you would have to your fans? Oh, I'm just delighted y'all have come to this little 
thing on uh, on on Facebook, uh, and it makes me excited to be able to um, have some connection again with so many people that that maybe I've met over the years. And it's been a wonderful life. Sue and I talk on often about what a great time we've had over the years. How you know great memories of the people in the classes and going to shows and stuff, which we're not doing these days, but. Um, so I thank you for coming. So sweet. I, I was just reading someone said that she's digging out her books <laughs> and, <laughs> and pick her favorite design and get busy painting. So yes, Brenda, do that and post it. And then you can put the little at sign in front of Ross's name and a little at sign yeah, in front of yeah. my name so that we could right. see what you've done. Super, so. super. I still do teach a couple of seminars a year. I do two here at the beach normally. We normally do one in October and it's a, like a four day class. We, we use a hotel down here at the beach where it's off season and the rates are very reasonable and you're on the ocean. It's not a big fancy hotel. Um, and then we normally do one in February. This year's February class we postponed and we're not going to do it till April and hopefully we can do it then. And I'm still going to go to Texas once a year. My friend Jane, who I've known, for, we all we met years ago working for Sue and we've been good friends for all these years and I go and it, that's as much for my mental health <laughs> as anything else and that's when, in September. When you do the four days is it four different projects? Is uh -huh, it uh -huh. one project you build on? It's four? No it, it's four different projects and they're sent a list ahead of time of the colors they bring your own paint you bring your uh, you bring your own surfaces and uh, it's a fun class, you know, it is. And uh, we normally have, you know, um, a lot of the same gals come back every year just because it's fun to come see your buddies that you've met at the beach. And we've enjoyed it. It's like I say, times are a little different, but we, we still hope to have one in, in April. So. Excellent. So all of the fans in um, over across the pond, and mm -hmm. you would like Ross to do a special webinar just for you and uh, at a time that's convenient, obviously, for both of Ross and you, uh, let her know, you know, yeah. go to her website yeah. and email her, text her, whatever it is that you need to do and let her know that you're interested in signing up for a class and we will work on putting one together for you. Okay, super. And we might have some Italian girls that might want to join us too because I've taught in Italy and that would be probably the same time zone. So that might work for them too. Yeah, it is. It is. Mm -hmm. So anyways, thank you so, so much. And um, definitely check out Ross's website. And is that where the Fredericksburg and the, um, yeah, they're listed on there. Mm -hmm. All of the, all the classes that you're yeah, going to be teaching yeah. are listed on there. There are so only a couple. Yeah. You can sign up. Well, all, all two <laughs> <laughs> for now, there'll be more. But um, yeah, so you can go over there and reserve your seat there. You can reserve your seat for her April class, April, March, her March class. It's March 6th on right. artfulwebinars.com. The landscape that she showed you with the little lighthouse, that's a free live demo that you can paint along with her by purchasing the pattern on her website, but it will be shown here in Artfully Connected. I try to put all of these when I go live, I try to stick them under the announcements at the top of the page so that you can find it faster and easier. Right. So I'm hoping that that's working out for you. So thank you so much for this wonderful hour, Ross, and, um, and all that you do for the industry, all that you've done. I feel like I should be awarding you a lifetime achievement award. Oh but no, <laughs> you're not done yet. You've got a lot more no, to, no, to yeah. share with us. So, um, until next time, everyone, uh, we do have the uh, gel printing demo tomorrow night with Christy Hartman. So that, that's Friday night with Christy Hartman. So don't uh, be afraid. Uh, to stop by then 7 p.m. and it's a lot of fun gel printing can be a lot of fun and you don't necessarily need a jelly plate to do it with but um, it helps so we've got more interviews down the pike we've got more paint alongs down the pike so I uh, hope to see you at one of those goodbye great. everyone and paint yeah, this was great <laughs> fun thank you you're welcome <laughs>